Hi all, Ross here, Thomas Classic and Modern. Welcome back to another video following on of our 1360 short motor assembly. So this video is gonna cover now, uh, following on from all the other videos of fitting the pistons down the bores. So we've got rigged up here what we need to do this job. Um, so all of our pistons all fitted, all laid out. I've just put the bearings in number one, ready to go. Other than that, we'll run through how we go about doing it. Our engine assembly lubricant, again, exactly the same as the one we used in the crankshaft fitting video. This is used for now all the big end bearings. And we would usually use our piston ring installation tools Unfortunately, I am still waiting for mine to be made for this particular size piston. This is a 73 millimeter piston, making a 1360 capacity engine. Uh, I'm currently waiting for my 70, 72 and a half, which is a genuine 1340 capacity, my 73 mil, and I'm also having one made for 74 mil. That actually allows me to have the complete set of these installation tools. But in this instance, we will be using the good old fashioned band type ring compressor. So we'll just move over to the engine and I'll show you what we do in the first instance. Okay, so first things first. These rods now have been thoroughly cleaned yet again. I've probably mentioned it before if I haven't, cleanliness is key. Uh, all of these pistons were cleaned before we fitted the rings. They haven't gone anywhere, they haven't done anything, uh, but I have cleaned them again. Um, so we've remarked the top of them with the corresponding bore and which way round they go. Again, just for quick reference, while you've got things clamped up, etc., it's nice to have an easy reference to go straight at with it. These are now ready to be put in the ring compressor. Point to note before you put them in the ring compressor, you have to line your rings up. Lots of people do this different ways, there's different schools of thought, so on and so forth. These rings do rotate as the uh, piston is going up and down the bore anyway. Some people say it makes absolutely no difference. Personally, good practice, it's the way I've always done it, it's the way I was taught to do it, it's the way I'll continue to do it. This has uh, three rings. The bottom ring is obviously made up of two uh, separate scraper rings. So they are essential that you do not line them up. So for example, we've got one gap just on the bottom ring there. And then if we rotate that, you'll see that the other gap is just there. What I tend to do with the oil scraper rings is I will rotate that ring so they are exactly opposite each other to start with. So that is there and that is there. So those rings are now top and bottom ring, scraper ring for the oil control ring, exactly opposite each other. In theory then, as you're rotating that, you're gonna rotate all of that together. Just how I do it. Then the top two rings, what I try and do with those is we put the center of the oil scraper ring there. Obviously now the other one is there. As this is three rings, we'll stagger these. The second ring will be 120 degrees away from that one. And the top ring will be 120 degrees away from that one. So you basically end up with the bottom ring gap here. The top scraper ring is there. And then we'll put the second ring and the top ring in that and that position. And then all we need to do is install this in the ring compressor. So, ring compressor, just like so. If you haven't seen one of these before, it ratchets around. As it ratchets around, obviously the hole in the center gets smaller, compresses the rings just enough for that piston and the ring assembly to go down the bore. Then when it's fully in place, you release and it opens back up to allow you to take it back off. That is all it is, very, very simple been around for donkey's years and I've never really had an issue with them so long as you're careful using it. You have to be careful doing this operation. It is possible to break piston rings, but 
I, in all honesty, I think you have to be quite ham-fisted to do so. Touch wood, and I am tempting fate by saying this, I've never broken one. Um, if you come up against any resistance when you're fitting these pistons down the bore, stop. If you end up battling pistons down the bore and this, that and the other, you will break things. Something will go wrong for you. So stop, take your time. And again, like many of my other videos, I will mention this is a bit of a feel thing. You get a feel for it. And generally, if something's tight or it's got resistance, it's wrong. There is something wrong. Stop, check, have a look walk away, come back, etc, etc. So what we now do is, I'll pop a, pop a little pad of blue roll there to catch some of this oil. So rings, double check they're in the same position that you want them. They are, they're there and there, that's no problem at all. Little bit of oil on the skirt of the piston. That is the bit that's gonna go in the bore first of all. So, a little bit of oil around there. And then plenty of oil around the rings. And when I said I use lots of oil, that's generally what I do. Plenty of oil around the rings and oil around there. Take your ring compressor, slide it all the way down to the bottom of the piston, and then start to rotate the ring compressor so that it clamps up those rings. Go as tight as you can with finger pressure. And then what I will do, I won't put any lubricant on here yet because I'm just going to do this for purposes of the video and show you how I go about lining this up because you will probably see that that ring compressor now is not square so obviously if that's not square it's not fully compressing the piston rings so all I do with that now is I'll drop it up against the bore that it's going in make sure that the crankshaft is rotated so that the journal that you're working on is all the way down and out of your way. Drop the piston just down like that so that the ring compressor is sat on the top and just push down ever so slightly so that that piston then registers just outside of the ring compressor. Just like so. Drop that down, and then all I do is I take a hammer and just very lightly tap the top of that ring compressor, and you'll hear the tone change. That ring compressor now is perfectly square with the top of that block, which means that it's square on that piston and ring assembly. You will then need to compress those rings further. Normally, it only goes up a click or two. Literally one click, and now that is tight. Those rings are fully compressed, and if you have a look inside there, you will see the oil has now been squeezed out that I put in there. So that ring assembly and piston assembly now is fully compressed as tight as it can be. So now you can see how that piston is sat in the ring compressor. So you've got a leading edge almost of that piston to go in the board or register things when it goes back in. You now need your assembly lubricant. What I do is I squirt a very small amount of oil on the big end journal, just so there's definitely some lubricant there. And then our engine assembly lubricant. This will actually show you, I mentioned in a previous video how thick this stuff is. It won't come out of the bottle. It is freezing in here again, unfortunately, uh, but this is like treacle. And again, plenty of this 
in use. And then we are ready to install this into our bore. So this is where our markings now come into their own. So that piston has been marked from the top. We know number one piston. The flat side of that conrod faces out towards number one. So that is all assembled, ready to go in. Very carefully, drop that down the bore. Yeah, these bores are already lubricated. There's just a smear of oil around them. There's plenty of oil on the piston, as you've seen. Drop that into situ, just like so. Make sure that that ring compressor is fully located. And then, a little bit of downward pressure on a, on a hammer. Push down so you feel that piston starting to move. Imperative that you make sure that the conrod bolts are not going to hit that crank journal. If they hit that crank journal, they will mark it and they will cause you problems. So you have to make sure, difficult for you to see, um, but you have to make sure that that conrod journal Sorry, that conrod bolt, both of those are well away from the crank journal itself. Which you can just about get to up through the bottom. And then you just push down and that piston is in. You don't need to hit it, yeah? You definitely don't need this end of the hammer. Uh, but that is all I use. I, I use something this size because it's got a little bit of weight to it. It's got a good purchase on it. But literally, as you saw, that went in as easy as pie. Just slide it straight through. What you then do is make sure that you push that piston all the way down. Locate it on your big end journal. Like so. And what I will now do is I will spin that engine over and I'll show you how we go assembling the cap. Okay, so we've just spun that over now so it's easier for you guys to see. I generally scrabble around on the floor and pop this up from underneath, but you can see much easier this way around. So you can see now that that conrod is fully located on that big end journal. Same again with the cap. Build a lubricant on there. Spread that around. Make sure there's plenty of it on there, which there is. Yeah. And again, noting that this tag marries up the same side as this tag. So any locating tags on big ends means they all go on the same side. And then if you drop that into situ. And now what I will do is I will get our ARP uh, thread lubricant and I will show you how we go about talking those up. Okay, so this is the ARP rod bolt fastener assembly lubricant. Comes with all of the ARP products in all honesty. And these are the instructions for these particular rod bolts. So as you will see on here, if you do not have a stretch gauge, torque the bolts to 35 pounds foot using ARP ultra torque fasteners. You will also notice the note, the con rods should always be resized after new rod bolts are installed. These ARP rod bolts will and do pull this rod housing out of shape. So when you torque these housings up, they do pull out of shape these have all been resized they are always resized in any of our engine builds when we use arp rod bolts so just cut the corner off the sachet so it's very very small hole and then we take our uh, rod nuts i put a very small amount on the bottom of that face and just smear it around and then we put a squeeze on both of the threads. Just like that. 
is I run these down with a ratchet just to spread that lubricant about, nip them up with a ratchet, pulls everything in, settles everything nicely. Obviously not torqued, just nipped up. And then what I do is make sure that the crankshaft turns. So that's your instant notification if you've got anything wrong. That turns absolutely fine. No tight spots. I then back these off evenly and then we'll torque them up. So as I said, rod bolt torque for these is 35 pound foot. 47 newton meters what i now do is i pick about 30 newton meters and torque those to 30 newton meters so that's an initial pull make sure everything's settled again make sure that the crank is free to move which it is and then set my torque wrench to 47 newton meters which is there and then torque both of those 47 newton meters evenly one two make sure everything rotates nice and freely it does no issues at all so there we have that is cylinder number one fully installed i'll pop you on the tripod and i'll do a little time lapse now of me reinstalling the remaining three Okay, so there we go. That's now all four pistons fully installed, ready to go. Our next stage with this build now is for us to install the camshaft, AC Dodd RS Plus billet camshaft that this one is running. Um, so in the meantime, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. Drop a comment down below and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks very much.